Hello everyone, Nick here, and I'm here to discuss about the E3 Gamer Pass and E3 as far as Gamer Passes go. So if you clicked on the title of the video, you know that basically I think this Gamer Pass were trash. And you might think, well why is this Gamer Pass so bad? So last year they opened it up to the public. And when they opened it up to the public, you know, at first I thought, oh great, I lost my ability to get an industry pass because my contact um, said that once they opened it up to the public, they had to cut down all the people that they could accept. That was the one bad thing. Then the other bad thing was um, I lost my media badge, which was unfortunate. So because of losing the media and the industry, I had to buy my pass last year. It really wasn't that bad. I mean, yes, the lines were horrible. I'm not, I'm not trying to justify last year 100%. But at least if you came at a decent hour, you could probably get to play some of the games. Yes, you'd have to wait like an hour or so, but let's say you waited, you got there, I don't know, like 7 in the morning when it opened up at 9. Or even on the first day when it opened up at noon. Um, yeah, you, you could actually play the games. Like, first thing, if you had strategic planning and you're able to do it uh, last year. Now, as far as this year goes, that's not the case. This year, they ruined the Gamer Pass, and you might think, well, why did they ruin it? Well, it's because everyone else got to go in three hours earlier on the first and second day. And the only day that the Gamer Pass got to be treated like everybody else was the last day. Now, you might think, oh, well, that's no big deal. Well, I was one of those people that got in early on the first day. And practically all the lines are capped. So I thought, okay, I just need to be more well planned out. So I did the best I could on the second day. And I was there very early in the morning. I was one of the first people in front. And I actually made a video where I sped walk and did everything I could do that I didn't run because, you know, we had to walk for Chad because he's one of the people there. And then... I get to the Pokemon line, and then BOOM! Capped. And I'm like, you're joking, right? So, what can you do to alleviate that problem? Well, you could wait on top of already waiting in line another hour next to that capped line to then rush into that line to then get into the line to avoid the line getting capped. <coughs> and then from there, you have to wait, you know, the same amount you would in line. So you have to wait an hour or two, depending on, you know, I don't know. Some, some of the people would wait an hour, hour and a half before they would uncap the line. Sometimes it was more. Um, and then once they uncapped the line, you'd have to get in in time before the line was capped again. So one of my friends waited a, a, a whopping four hours to play Pokemon. Four. You know, I know ESA is doing it for, but this is just a terrible value. And if ESA is watching this, please don't do this to, to people. Please don't ruin their experiences. Please don't, don't charge 250 to then make us wait four hours to play one game. I mean, I know that's great for you because you don't care about our experience, even though you clearly care because you ask for our feedback, but you don't because you just want to make money. So, yeah, the C3 wasn't very good because of the, the issues. Now, you might think, oh, well, some of them had, like, programming. Well, similar to the Sony situation with last year, uh, the app crashed. Granted, I didn't really play any Sony games, but I heard that uh, it really wasn't the most optimal situation with that. Yes, Nintendo did do the ticketing situation so everyone could at least play once. And that is good for that one aspect. However, I think they should have done it with Pokemon as well. Because Pokemon was a very highly anticipated game, and I think Nintendo kind of faltered there. 
Also, Nintendo doesn't seem to care that the Switch is also a portable system, and they could just have people attached with belts like they did with the 3DS. I mean, I don't get that. I mean, that didn't make to me sense. I will have to say, on a quick note, that I didn't really care for the Nintendo booth this year. Even though, yes, I love Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers is a great game. Um, but the overall decorations was very bland compared to the past two years. And even probably, I'd probably say Smash Brothers in 2014 had a more interesting booth. It's probably more so on par with 2014, but still. But anyway, I, my point is, the Gamer Pass, this, this is a bad value. Do not buy this. If, if you feel inclined to buy this badge, it's not refundable. You can't refund it. All I kept thinking about that whole convention was, I don't want to be here anymore. This is terrible. I have to wait, I have to wait for a line to open because it's capped, to then rush in. It's like, so I can't even enjoy any of the actual experience of the entire convention. And most of the people that have gamer passes also can't enjoy it. It's horrible. This is a horrible, horrible execution. It's even worse than last year. I think it's worse. It's great for people that have industry and media, great. I think that's, I think, they need to do a better organization. Um, I, from what I've heard, Gamescom, I haven't gone to Gamescom personally, but Gamescom had a thing where you could go as media for the first two days, and then they had a separate two days for gamers. So if ESA does plan on doing the Gamer Pass again, they should do, they, they really should almost add an extra day. That way, everyone can at least play what they want to play, or at least half of the games. But you can't even do that. At least play maybe five top games would be ideal, like five games that you want to play. And, I mean, I wanted to play Resident Evil 2 demo. <laughs> Good luck on that one. You can't do that. The Mega Man one, I got lucky. I managed to get in in time. And even when on the third day, when I got to play Pokemon, um, I had to do, like, you have to be very strategic when you enter in the building. You have to basically, like, maneuver in certain lines. And, yes, it can be helpful, but at the end of the day, it's like you get that one narrow window of opportunity to get into the line, and if you don't take advantage of that, um, sucks to be you. So, yeah, this, um... I don't think I can explicitly say more that this is this is the worst value that you can get. Um, don't buy this pass um, unless you really want to go and experience E three in probably one of the worst possible ways. Um, it's just not very good. Oh, and also I got kicked off the line because I had a backpack and it was kind of like even though. Like, they claimed they had said things, they kind of didn't. Some of, the, some of the communication was a bit off to me. They didn't tell um, people that bought badges until, like, very last minute, like, practically a week or two weeks before that the Gamer Pass was, like, not even like it was last year. So, can you imagine buying this pass in February when it was released? And then thinking, oh great, you know, everything's going to be open up like it was before. And then when you get there, you find out, oh, it's not like it was last year. It's terrible. So, I, I mean, I could go on for hours about why it's bad, even though I feel like I'm kind of just reiterating the same point. You know, you're not really getting the value that you should. You're not playing the games that you, you know, paid the money to get. That's that's essentially my takeaway. The TLDR is you spend 250, maybe if you're lucky 150 for that first thousand, um, but you spend 250 to buy this pass to get less of an experience. You get a watered down experience. It's almost better if you really desperately want to go to spend the thousand dollars on the business pass. And that's really sad for me to say because, you know, no one wants to spend a thousand dollars at a convention. I don't want to spend a thousand dollars. But 
I would rather do that. I'd rather network to get a media badge. I'd rather network to get an industry or even somehow get exhibitor. Though I don't know how you get an exhibitor without actually working the exhibits. But anyway, I'd rather get that than have to buy 250 because that's just, it was pretty bad. Um, but like I said before, I go on for hours about why this is the worst value for your money. But basically, you know, you get less hours, less time to play games, more frustration with lines because they cap out. So you have to wait an additional hour or even two for the lines to uncap to then rush in. And yeah, so I think I've said enough and uh, I don't want to reiterate hash old points again and again, but I've said enough. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe and you know, voice your concerns to ESA uh, if you can. Um, I doubt they care because all they're going to see is money. But that's basically the long end of the stick. But anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.